Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 21 of the chapter Thermodynamics. In this video, I'm going to tell you about bond enthalpy. If you really look at a chemical reaction, what happens in a chemical reaction? We have certain reactants which turn into certain products. What is happening in this? The bonds that are present in the reactants, they break and they recombine to form new bonds and the products actually are formed by the formation of these new bonds. So if you really look at uh, a chemical reaction, the enthalpy change in a reaction could be defined as the enthalpy change that is involved in every step, that is every breaking of a bond and every formation of a new bond. So if you understand, if you really look at bond enthalpy, the term explains to you itself that it is the amount of heat that would be given out or uh, absorbed in the formation or dissociation of bonds. Imagine bonds to be like friends or a friendship, a bond. So if you want to break a bond, a friendship, you have to use energy to break the bond. And uh, if the bond has to be formed, it forms and leads to stability because two is always better than one. So when a bond is formed, it leads to stability and stability is nothing but a lower energy state. So whenever bonds are formed, energy is lost. And whenever bonds are broken, energy has to be given to the system. So the bond enthalpy would be the bond dissociation enthalpy or bond dissociation energy, which would be positive. Why? Because you have to provide heat to break bonds. Or it could be the enthalpy of formation or bond formation energy, which would be the amount of energy which is given out when the bond is formed. Whenever a bond is broken, we, that enthalpy change that is involved in the breaking of one mole of bonds would be called the bond dissociation enthalpy because the bonds are dissociated. And tell me, if you imagine a bond to be a friendship, a bond, a tightly, uh, a knot that is tied between two uh, parts of a rope, in order to break that bond, you need energy. You have to provide energy. You have to cause something to break the bond. So whenever bonds are broken, energy has to be given to a substance. So bond enthalpy or bond dissociation enthalpy, where you're breaking up the bonds, that would be defined as the amount of heat that has to be provided to break one mole of bonds between two atoms. So that would be the bond dissociation enthalpy. And on the other hand, what would be the opposite of this? If the bonds, uh, there are two individual atoms and they are forming a bond and it, they are the same two atoms, who, the ones that we dissociated, when they again form a bond, what would happen as a result of the formation of bond? They would become stable. And if they become stable, stability is nothing but a lower energy state. So that amount of energy which was absorbed to break that bond, when a new bond is formed between the two atoms, the same amount of energy will be given out. And that would be known as the bond formation enthalpy or the enthalpy of bond formation. So bond dissociation enthalpy and the enthalpy of bond formation are actually just, it is actually numerically the same amount. It is the same amount of energy, but it is energy given when you have to break the bond and it is the same amount of energy which is given out when the bond, the same number of bonds are formed. Having understood this, let us now see, study the bond enthalpy as it is given in the book. When you talk of bond dissociation enthalpy or the bond formation enthalpy of bond formation, there are two terms that we have to focus on. First is the bond dissociation enthalpy, which I just explained to you. It is the amount of heat which has to be given to uh, for the breaking of one mole of bonds between two atoms. And the mean bond enthalpy. I'll come to this later. Let us study the bond dissociation enthalpy first. When are bonds broken? You do not always have diatomic molecules in the reactants where the bonds that are broken are just one mole of bonds. You may polyatomic molecules that is molecules which have more than two atoms 
So when you have diatomic molecules, how would you define the bond dissociation enthalpy? Here you have hydrogen molecule. And what you have to keep in mind here is that it should be the reactant and product in bond dissociation enthalpy or bond enthalpy should be gaseous. This is only a value for gaseous reactants and products. The reason for this is if the state was something different, then there would be energy required to change the state to the gaseous state. And then the amount of energy would be calculated as the bond enthalpy, whether bond dissociation or bond formation. Therefore, we start when we are talking only of bond enthalpy, we will take the reactants and products in the gaseous form so that we are only considering that amount of energy which is being given or taken in the formation or breaking of bonds. So for hydrogen molecule to break down into two hydrogen atoms, both the reactants and the products should be in the gaseous state. The enthalpy, the bond dissociation enthalpy in this case of hydrogen, hydrogen single bond, one mole of bonds would be equal to 435 kilojoules per mole. In other words, when one mole of hydrogen molecules break down to give you two moles of hydrogen atoms, the, uh, the amount of energy which is required to break one mole of HH single bonds would be equal to 435 kilojoules per mole for hydrogen molecule. So we say bond dissociation enthalpy is the change in enthalpy when one mole of covalent bonds of a gaseous covalent molecule, remember the gaseous is very important, it should be a gaseous covalent molecule is broken to form products in the gaseous phase because it is only in the gaseous phase that no other energy involvements would be there. So the bond dissociation enthalpy is actually the enthalpy will be actually numerically the amount of energy would be equal to the enthalpy of uh, atomization in the case of hydrogen. So if you really look at this, we have done the enthalpy of atomization. What is it when the hydrogen molecule breaks down to form atoms of hydrogen, the amount of energy required to break one mole of a substance into its atoms is known as the enthalpy of atomization. So one mole of hydrogen molecules break down to form two moles of hydrogen atoms. Therefore, this enthalpy, the, that is the bond dissociation enthalpy in the case of a diatomic homonuclear um, what, um, molecule would also be equal to the enthalpy of atomization. And if you take other diatomic molecules like chlorine, chlorine breaking down to give you two atoms of chlorine, oxygen breaking down to give you two atoms of oxygen, although there's a difference between chlorine and oxygen and hydrogen. In hydrogen and chlorine, there's a single bond between the two uh, atoms. But in oxygen, there's a double covalent bond. But to, when we calculate the bond dissociation enthalpy of oxygen, it comes out to be 248 kilojoules per mole. It means that this is the amount of energy which is required to break both the bonds, to separate them, to form their atoms. So the bond dissociation enthalpy in oxygen means that this is the amount of energy required to break the double bond between the two oxygen atoms. While the bond dissociation enthalpy in chlorine and hydrogen was the amount of energy required to break one mole of single bonds between the molecules, atoms of the molecule. This was about the diatomic molecules. We now come to polyatomic molecules. Polyatomic molecules means that a molecule which has more than two atoms. For example, methane. In the case of methane, when it breaks down and the bonds break, the amount of energy, now all the four bonds in methane, they are the four hydrogens which are attached, we know, is in a tetrahedral fashion and they are identical. All the four bonds are identical. Therefore, the amount of energy required to break each one of these bonds should also be equal, logically. But what do we find when this reaction actually takes place, the total bond enthalpy or the enthalpy of atomization in methane is where you get one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms, all again, pay attention in the gaseous state, is 1665 kilojoules per mole. But when we carry out this process and observe it in steps, we notice that the bond enthalpy of each bond is different. 
and what do we notice when methane turns into CH3 and one hydrogen is given out the amount of energy the bond enthalpy for breaking that first bond all four bonds remember are identical so it doesn't matter which hydrogen is coming out first but once one hydrogen comes out the amount of energy required for that is 427 kilojoules per mole but in the next step now we have CH3 and now the second atom goes out let us assume that in the first step this hydrogen was lost now we are left with CH3 the bond dissociation enthalpy in this case was the first one which is 427 kilojoules per mole we would expect the second hydrogen which is going out to also have the same amount of energy but what do, do we notice that when the second hydrogen goes out the amount of energy required is even more it turns out to be 439 kilojoules per mole instead of 427 which was the amount of energy which was required to break the first bond now why does this happen methane was a stable molecule and it had formed it had completed its octet by forming four bonds the carbon by forming four bonds with four different hydrogens and the hydrogens had completed their duplet there was no reason for it to just break a bond and let one hydrogen go out so the breaking of a bond and leading to an unstable remnant that is CH3 when one hydrogen is lost methane is no longer stable therefore it does not want that to lose that bond that's the reason why it has an enthalpy the first hydrogen which is removed has an enthalpy of 427 kilojoules per mole but once the CH3 is all CH4 has already become unstable by losing one hydrogen now it clings on to the other three hydrogens even more strongly I've already lost one of my security my safety net I do not want to be more unstable so it holds on to the remaining three hydrogens even stronger and that is the reason why when we remove the second hydrogen carbon is does not want to allow that second hydrogen does not want to lose that second hydrogen therefore the amount of energy required to break that second bond is even higher in the third step now carbon is all the more desperate you know it really wants to hold on to the remaining two hydrogens and again we break the third bond and that energy is the highest 452 kilojoules per mole to lose the third hydrogen right and now for the fourth hydrogen what do we see the amount of energy after losing three hydrogens now carbon only has one bond with one hydrogen and which is and when we continue giving it heat and we want to remove the fourth hydrogen for some time it holds on to that hydrogen and then it thinks you know anyway I've lost all my stability so you just take this one away too so we find that we may expect the fourth one to be the highest uh, enthalpy of um, bond enthalpy but the fourth bond enthalpy is actually lower and it is actually the lowest of all because at this stage carbon fields have already lost everything so let this one also just go but the entire for the entire reaction the enthalpy of atomization would be the sum of these four different bond enthalpies and that comes out to be 1665 kilojoules per mole but from this what do we understand that the enthal the bond enthalpy for the same bond it differs in the same molecule even when all four bonds were identical all four bond enthalpies were different Similarly, if hydrogen was bound to some other atom its bond enthalpy would be different and if that entire thing was connected to some other uh, molecule or some other atom that would have its influence also so what is an atom connected to which bond whether the bond that is breaking is the first one second one that is the sequence in which it is broken the bond enthalpy of every individual bond may be slightly different because of the conditions so we find that in this case that is it is not possible to talk of the CH bond enthalpy because every time we are getting a different bond enthalpy therefore for such molecules we use a mean bond enthalpy just to make our calculations a little easier what do we do we call it the mean bond enthalpy and if these are the four bond enthalpies that we got in the case of methane 
we will find the sum of all four and divide it by four to get the mean that is the average so mean bond enthalpy when you have many bonds of the same kind in the same molecule we find out the mean value of the bond enthalpy and we usually use that in our calculations so mean bond enthalpy of ch bonds in methane molecule would be 1665 that was the total sum of the all the bond enthalpies divided by 4 which is 416 kilojoules per mole mean bond enthalpies they change slightly from compi compound to compound for example take a look here in methane all four ch bonds were identical yet the mean bond enthalpies were different if you look at this molecule now ch3 ch2 cf in this the ch bonds are different here the ch bonds the carbon is attached to at one place is attached to another carbon and here the carbon is attached to another carbon on one end and it is attached to chlorine on the other hand and chlorine may have different properties it may have its own influence it is more electronegative it will have a tendency to pull electrons towards itself so it will have its own influence on the bond enthalpies of the hydrogens which are attached and similarly in the case of uh, CH3NO2, now we have NO2, one carbon attached to three hydrogens, but it is attached to a nitrogen. So that also would have its influence. And therefore, as you move from molecule to molecule, from compound to compound, you find that the same bond enthalpy, that is the enthalpy between, uh, bond dissociation enthalpy between carbon and hydrogen would be different in different compounds. But this difference is only slight. It is not a major difference. Whatever influence these have would only be a slight influence. So bond enthalpies can be calculated using Hess's law. If you do not remember Hess's law, I would encourage you to go back a few videos and watch that video where I've discussed Hess's law. So bond enthalpies, they can be calculated using Hess's law, which is when the reaction takes place in more than one step and we find out the sum of all the steps. So we can find out bond enthalpies using Hess's law and we do have a table of mean bond enthalpies. Mean bond enthalpies of different substances and you remember that mean bond enthalpy is not the exact enthalpy. It is only an approximate value because none of these values is actually 416. The mean is only an approximation and therefore when we try to when sometimes when we do not have the enthalpy of formation table to calculate the enthalpy of reaction we sometimes depend on the mean bond enthalpies also to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction but that would be approximate and it would have another limitation the mean bond enthalpy or bond enthalpy is only for gaseous reactants and products so you can use the bond enthalpy only in those reactions where both the reactants and products are gaseous in order to calculate the enthalpy of reaction. So you have a table of mean bond enthalpies and it is used when the enthalpy of formation is not available. This is approximate and it is only for the gaseous phase. How do you calculate the enthalpy of reaction? We calculate the enthalpy of reaction in terms of bond enthalpy by it is the summation of the bond enthalpies of reactants minus the summation of bond enthalpies of products and since bond enthalpy is bond dissociation enthalpy the opposite of it would be the enthalpy of formation so in if you remember how did we calculate the enthalpy of reaction in terms of enthalpy of formation it was the summation of enthalpy of formation of products minus summation of enthalpy of products of uh, enthalpy of formation of reactants but in terms of bond enthalpies which are bond dissociation enthalpies you have to put the reverse of this that is it is the summation to get the correct sign of the enthalpy change it the enthalpy of reaction would be the summation of bond enthalpies of reactants minus the bond enthalpies of products so uh, after having done this we would be doing a few more bond enthalpies before i really come to solving numerical problems on this if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up and uh, recommend my channel to your friends subscribe to my channel and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now